So Joshua, I'm uh, looking forward to this conversation because, you know, I believe that the entrepreneurs are the invisible heroes of the American economy. They provide us all these products and services that improve our lives because they took this risk. They risk their future, their family's future, and yet they step out and do that. And they provide us these things that improve our lives, but they happen to also employ in aggregate, almost half of the workforce. And yet they have to do all of this on their personal credit. This, mm -hmm. the cards are stacked against the, the small entrepreneurs, these uh, entrepreneurs that have less than 20 or less employees. And, and yet they have to go to bat with whatever credit score they have and whatever, whatever with their credit cards or whatever they can scrape together to get financing to start this business and usually the SBA route is like this very mysterious thing that seems a little bit far off the problem is this you need to have a, a good banker that's one of the the keys of success in in businesses like having a banker that understands what you do but in my case my banker has helped me and worked with me but if I wanted an SBA loan I have to go somewhere else. And usually like the big banks, well, I don't know. I don't think I trust them, especially after this PPP stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, tell us, Joshua, how did you start planting your flag in the SBA loan space? And then what are some of the myths around SBA loans that we need to uh, dispel? Yeah. So a uh, great, great, great questions and, you know, great assessment. Well, I can, <laughs> I can shed some light on why the big banks are usually the worst place to go for, for SBA financing and share some stories. Um, but my background is I actually, uh, I actually purchased my first business with an SBA loan at 19 years old. I got 1.2 million bucks from a local bank up in Chicago to go buy a, a healthcare services business up there. And, um, you know, I realized that through that process, that there was a lot of kind of bad information out there about SBA loans. There was a lot of bad information and just a lot of differences and nuances with going through the application process of getting an SBA loan that most business owners uh, just don't have time to deal with. I mean, I had to call at least 50 to 100 banks um, and everyone, you know, it, it's it's one of those things, if you, have you heard the phrase, if you ask 10 lawyers their opinion, you'll get 40 different opinions. That's mm -hmm. the same thing with bankers. You know, you ask 10 different bankers, what their opinion is on if they can get something done and you get 40 different answers. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Even though all of the banks I approached, it was about the same SBA, you know, loan program. So, uh, you know, I finally found a lender that was, you know, suitable. I, you know, I found a couple of them actually, but the one I, the one I went with uh, ended up being, um, you know, obviously the one that did it. And so I ended up purchasing two subsequent businesses and kind of the same niche healthcare services uh, before I was able to, you know, turn 21 recently I kind of sold those businesses and moved on from it because I see a greater opportunity in, um, you know, building businesses around helping other smaller companies um, access financing. So I've got a consulting business. We're building a you know, FinTech platform uh, to help pair borrowers with, with lenders, but that's a little bit about me and kind of my background. I'm 23 now. Um, my birthday is in August, so I'm 23 and a half, I guess. But, um, you know, I, I saw a, a big disparity in information out there for small business owners. And a lot of the bankers I talk with, they, you know, the ones who actually do SBA, they, they agree, you know, the, the biggest barrier to people getting SBA financing is not, you know, themselves, it's, it's, they just don't have the right information. You know, if every borrower, every business owner out there really knew how to navigate SBA financing, you know, the, the borrowing volume would be 10 times what it is normally, you know, right now it's, uh, it's about 25 or $30 billion a year. 2020 was a little bit, you know, obviously down because all the banks were focused on PPP and there was all this other craziness going on. But yeah, I mean, it, <clears throat> you know, just imagine it, instead of it being a $30 billion a year program, it's 300 billion. I mean, that's, that's really what a lot of the bankers think it, it could be. But the only issue is that most people just, they don't hear about it. They don't understand it. They don't know where to start. And so that's kind of what, that's kind of what I help with. I, you know, I help educate business owners on where to start, how to go. And then obviously I can, you know, consult with them and, you know, help them raise the money they need to either start the business, buy a business or, you know, grow, grow the existing one that they have. So. So it's like, we're more f familiar as, um, as a group now with PPP, we've gone through a certain process and have been exposed to that system, but it's still like, you know, isn't SBA loan a good idea? Yeah. So what you were talking about earlier 
with the cards being stacked against people, that's that's really, you know, for, for the small entrepreneur, that's the case. If you go to a regular bank and you're just looking for conventional financing for your business and it's just based on cash flow of the business, the profitability, you know, most banks aren't really going to touch you until you're doing like $4 million a year of profit. So the question is, how do you get from zero, you know, or wherever you are today to $4 million a year in profit? Like what, how do you get there? And so, you know, obviously most businesses don't actually make it to that $4 million a year of profit number. Plenty of business owners, they build it up to two, $3 million a year of profit and they're happy with it. They take the cash from that. They invest in their properties. They do other things, diversify and grow their wealth. Um, but, you know, the whole reason that the SBA was actually, um, created back in the 1950s, like post-World War II, was the government recognized that the chips were in fact stacked against the small business owner. And so when they formed the SBA, um, they did a few things. They did, uh, they, they put certain initiatives in place to make sure that a certain portion of government contracting dollars uh, would, would go to, you know, either small businesses or, you know, uh, veteran-owned small businesses. Uh, so that was one of the big initiatives, but also they set up, you know, the I guess the beginning of what we know today is the 7A and 504 loan programs. And so the way those work and the reason that they're great for a small entrepreneur is the government through the SBA works with, you know, uh, thousands of banks across the country who participate in the program and they guarantee uh, a significant portion of the loan, very much like a government guaranteed mortgage or a student loan um, where, you know, you have private lenders that are actually doing the loans. They retain a small portion of the risk but the majority of it is guaranteed by the government. And you know, when you have a government guarantee on 75 to 90% of a loan, obviously the terms on that loan are gonna be much better than if you just went to a lender who's gonna give it to you, you know, 100% on their risk, because they're gonna charge you a much higher interest rate um, and the terms are gonna be much more restrictive. So instead of paying 14% on a, on a loan and you know, you've got a three-year payback, you've got a 10-year payback with a maximum interest rate of 6% right now wow. on, a, on an SBA loan, yeah. So, but yeah, that's, that's exactly why the SBA was created. You know, chips are in fact stacked against uh, small business owners and um, the way the government decided to mitigate this was actually form a, form a government agency that, that could help with it. And, you know, that's, that's what they did. So you're listening or you're watching a excellent conversation with Joshua, Joshua Kim, his company is seven accelerator.com. And we're learning about SBA loans today, why it's a good idea or yep. if it, the myths about it. So, so what, what should we know about an SBA loan? Yeah. So what I would say the most important things to know are there's, there's, there's really kind of two or three categories of, of loans. Uh, you have what are known as the 7A loans, and that can be either just a regular 7A or 7A express. And then you also have 504 loans, uh, section 504 loans. Those are, pre, those are purely for real estate. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's purchase, construction, renovation, um, you know, anything for uh, anything for real estate that's exclusively for your business. You can't use it to flip houses or anything. But <clears throat> you know, the great thing about SBA, the 7A loans, is you can pretty much use them in any kind of for-profit business in the U.S. There's, there's a few restrictions, like you can't use it for, you know, like I said, buying rental properties. You can't use it for if you have like a, you know, a cab. You know, a medical marijuana dispensary. There's there's certain restrictions on industries, but you know, 99% of the businesses out there are going to be eligible for SBA financing, especially um, businesses that are online. I'm actually working with um, someone right now. He's he's got a software company. He works with um, his software is the backend software for several online Amazon e-commerce style businesses, and so we're actually partnering with them because a lot of um, business owners that work online, either through e-commerce marketing, they they're not used to uh, the concept that they can go get bank financing for their business. Um, I, you know, I have a friend of mine, he makes about three, $400,000 a year on a couple of Amazon stores. And he had no idea, you know, he was always complaining about, you know, he's got great credit and a hundred thousand dollar credit cards, but he's like, he sometimes maxes them out to go buy inventory. And so, um, you know, I'm helping him get a, you know, a more permanent long-term working capital solution through, um, through an SBA line of credit so that he can draw down on it, buy more inventory and, and go forth. So, but yeah, I mean, you know, breaking down what can you do with it, you can, you know, you can use it for pretty much any legitimate business need that you have, uh, whether it's just to grow, buy inventory, refinance debt, you can actually use it for partner buyouts too. Um, so, you know, if you want to, you know, buy out a partner, you can use it for purchasing real estate, construction real estate. There's a lot of different purposes that you can use for it. But, you know, what I tell people is, you know, if you have a for-profit business in the U.S. and you you need to borrow money at any time to grow your business, you should really look at SBA because you're not going to be able to find any terms that are even close to it. Um, 
you know, from any private lender, whether it's a credit card, line of credit or anything else, they're just not going to be able to match it because SB loans come with a government guarantee. So, well, let's revisit that. So our government SBA loans, government backed, what does that mean specifically? Yeah. So what that means is, so when you go to a bank, let's say you go to, you know, ABC bank, we'll just use a, a no-name bank, for example, and you go get an SBA loan from them for a million dollars. The way it works, and I'll, I'll get into it specifically, right now, the guarantee percentage is actually 90%. Normally, it's 75, but let's just say it's 75. So you would go to them and say, okay, I'm going to go get a loan for a million dollars. I need it to you know, buy a building or, or buy a bunch of trucks, let's say even a, you know, a commercial contracting business of some sort, electrical contracting, you buy a bunch of buy trucks, you know, buy a bunch of trucks, equipment, whatever. So you'd go to them and you'd say, hey, I need a million dollars. Okay, cool. And write your loan, they give you a million dollars. 750 grand of it would be guaranteed by the government in that case. So in the event that the loan defaults and goes bad, let's say, you know, uh, your town gets hit by a tornado, your insurance denies payment on all the trucks and, you know, you have to you know, the, the, the business is destroyed, whatever, you know, worst case scenario. The way that the bank looks at it is like, okay, well, we're really risking $250,000. And it's actually less than that because what they do is most banks, they will take the government guaranteed portion and they will actually sell it at a premium to an investor, like a pension fund or whatever. So their downside risk is actually a lot less than 250 k The mechanics of that are probably more complicated than anyone cares to know, but that's usually what happens. So the banks, they just look at it and say, okay, well, you know, we're going to get a premium on selling this portion. We're only going to be risking, I guess, in the circumstance I described, they would probably only really be risking like 160, 170 grand of, of money instead of 250 grand. So on a million dollar loan where they're only really risking 170 grand, it's not a bad deal for them. So it's just obviously a numbers game. You know, as long as they have a certain, above a certain percentage of the loans that pay and, and, and go fine, they're good. Um, but that's, that's what it means by uh, it's got a government guarantee. So in the event that the loan goes bad, they would file a guarantee request with the SBA and the SBA would cut them a check for that 75% of, of, of the loan. Right now, because of the incentives uh, available through the December stimulus package, the guarantee percentage is actually temporarily increased to 90% and encourages lenders to make loans that they might otherwise not make because they know right now there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of, you know, kind of economic, um, you know, distress and basically they through through doing that they want they, they want to encourage lenders to to take more risks to put more capital out there you know they, they know they're obviously going to have you know more defaults and losses from from this period of time but to them like you said it's, it's about you know backing the you know the invisible superheroes of the economy of the small business owners yeah so in this ppp experience that i went through i realized i really needed someone to help me to make sure that my application was correct that my numbers were right you know i, I wanted what i um, filled out to be forgiven yep but you know if you make a mistake or you calculate wrong you're you're at significant risk so how how to apply for a sba loan is like yep. a big barrier yeah how, so is there like they would go to you and then you're going to make sure that all their I's are dotted, their T's are crossed, and they're reducing that risk of just making a mistake on an application? Well, yeah. I mean, here, here's, here's what I'll tell you. <clears throat> the, the PPP application is, um, it, the whole component of PPP is different than typical 7A. I mean, if you actually look, mm -hmm. and I'll, I guess we can kind of talk about it later, you know, some of the big myths about SBA financing and, and stuff. Because um, I know we wanted to talk on that, but one of the biggest myths that people have is like you know like you you know you go to the bank and they give you this mountain of paperwork you have to fill out. It's it's actually the only there's only two SBA forms for a regular seven eight loan. It's actually only two forms. One of them is a personal financial statement, so it's a very simple form. I mean, you got to fill out how much cash you have, how much you have in your real estate, you know, life insurance, stocks, equities, whatever. Very simple form. So you just fill that out, um, and then the other form that you got to fill out is. Um, it's a borrower information sheet. So you just list out personal information, you know, obviously your social security number, your date of birth, um, uh, just basic information about you. The way, the way the SBA gauges how well that they're doing from a diversity quotient standpoint is actually this form. So like, you know, you put your ethnicity down and then that way the, the SBA is able to track, okay, well, you know, we were able to lend 
you know, this many dollars through this many loans to, you know, minorities. Like that's, that's, you know, that's, that's a big, that's a big thing of, of, of what they want to do is they want to make capital available to, um, you know, to, to communities that are otherwise kind of blocked out of the typical banking world. So, um, I, you know, I'd say, you know, you know realistically, and, and the reason I know this is because I've, I've had correspondents, um, yeah, I, I, uncovered, I uncovered something really shady with with the business that I purchased, and th there was a whole th there was a whole like package of, of stuff I sent over, and they they looked into the guy who who did some of the funky stuff. Um, you know what I would tell people is, you know, as long as you're you're not like blatantly dishonest in your forms, you don't lie about you know your personal financial situation, you don't put a fake social security number or anything, you're, you'll be fine. I mean, if you have a minor mistake here, there. They're, they're not going to care. Um, now, if you, you know, if you, if you forge a bunch of paperwork and you have fake tax returns and you use it to go get a million bucks and then you go, you know, you move to Bali. Yeah. They'll, they'll come after you for that. But as long as you're using the money for like a legitimate business purpose, you know, a mistake here, there's not going to be a big issue back to your point about, you know, how do you apply technically? And, and this is, this is kind of, you know, the premise of, of, of what I do, how I help people. There are 3,500 plus lenders in the U S that do SBA loans. You're free to go to any single one of them, ask them, you know, hey, can I get application paperwork? Can I go apply? But where people stumble uh, with, with getting SBA financing, it's, it's kind of a twofold thing. One, they don't know where to start, kind of like what we were talking about earlier. They, they don't know where to start at all. And so uh, they just, they never try. And, you know, or they've heard myths about how hard it is. It takes a lot of paperwork, takes a lot of time. So they just, they never go ahead and do it. So what, what we do with 7A Accelerator is we, we help a business owner by evaluating initially what kind of business they have. And so, you know, what business they have, what their capital needs are. And so by doing that first, we're able to help, re help really figure out where to best put them. And, and what I mean by that is like, you know, what lender to pair them with. I'll, I'll share a story. And this is, this is, um, this is kind of a funny one because it's 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 the most oblivious example of just lenders being ridiculous with this program. The biggest misconception that I had when I first got my first loan was that all lenders are created equal, meaning if you go to one bank, well, it's the same SBA government program. They're all going to have the same underwriting guidelines. And I found this was very much not the case. Um, so <clears throat> just as an example, I, I was talking to a, uh, a medical professional. He has six locations, you know, six clinics locations. Uh, the guy is clearing about two and a half to two point eight million dollars a year, eight hundred credit, perfect situation, strong financials. He went to the bank and he wanted you know a loan of about one point two, one point three million dollars to go purchase a building for one of his locations. Um, you know he wanted to buy the building that he was in because it would be cheaper to have the mortgage than to lease it, right? The bank actually turned it down, and the problem that he that the mistake that he the only mistake that he made was that he went to Bank of America, BB and T, and Chase. All of, all of these big banks, and you know, here's the thing: the problem with those big banks is they just don't care. The guy's a perfectly creditworthy borrower. He should have been able to get the loan, but they declined him for like completely dumb reasons that made no sense. They're like, "Oh, we want thirty percent down." He's like, "I don't have to put thirty percent down. I only have to put ten percent down. Why are you asking me to put it down 30? And so, that's kind of where I help people. So I'm actually helping him because I'm like, "Oh, this is easy." I mean, you you he had one of the easiest deals in the world that should have been able to get approved, but because he went to three big banks, they made it hard. So I'm in process of just helping him. I referred him to another lender that will probably be able to do the deal without any cash down because he, you know, he's got so many locations, everything's so strong. They're going to finance the building for him 100%. In certain circumstances in, with SBU, you, you can actually do that. But that's that's just a typical situation of what happens with a lot of borrowers. They they go apply at the wrong banks and they get declined. And then they have this misconception that, okay, well, SBA is hard. You can't get an SBA loan because of this, that, the other. It's not that you can't get an SBA loan. It's just you can't get an SBA loan at that bank because that bank has a really dumb and backwards system on doing SBA loans. So that's really the biggest key of, of kind of like how, you know, like to, to your initial question, how do people apply? Well, you know, it's, it's really good to work with someone such as myself. I say that self-seekingly, obviously, because this, you know, this is what I do full time. But, you know, if, if you were to go out there on your own, you're a business owner and you really need that loan to go buy that building or whatever, you might waste three to four months of your, of your life calling around at all these different banks, just saying, hey, do you do SBA loans? And of course, all of them are going to say, yeah, we do SBA loans. But until you really dig down into the hard questions with the lenders, like how many deals like this do you do annually? What kind of credit score requirements do you guys have? What kind of industries do you lend to? Until you know what questions to really ask them, you're not going to be able to filter out. So, you know, it'd be like shopping for, 
shopping for a house, but you know, you just tell your realtor, I need a house. And you just give them a price range. You're not giving them, well, I need a pool or I want this style or this or that. Um, and, and so that's, that's really where a lot of borrowers waste time. They just, they just, they talk to the wrong lenders. Um, and, and a lot of time the lenders will string them along for, for months, you know, and then just at, at the last second, sorry, we can't do it. Declined. You know, and I tell I tell people you're best getting a no from a bank within a week or two of talking to them just to save your time. So, you know, not to waste your time dealing with them. Just go work with someone else. So anyway, that's that, that's what I would say. You know, how do you apply? You can technically apply to any lender. Just, you know, call them, talk to an SBA lender, have them send you the checklist and the forms you got to fill out, um, you know, but usually it's best to make sure that you're, you're working with someone who can make sure you get set up with the right lender to begin with, because if you get set up with the right lender to begin with, and, you know, we all know for a fact that can get your deal done, you'll save countless hours and, and, you know, months of your life wasting going back and forth. So what are the characteristics of a successful SBA loan applicant? Yep. So the great thing about this is that, you know, the great thing about the SBA application process is that bucket can be actually pretty wide um obviously the ideal borrower makes you know three four million dollars a year in their business has very little debt and an 800 credit score obviously that's not the case for everybody um you know and in most in most situations folks in that position don't have much of a need for sb financing uh, but what I would say, like an ideal borrower is going to have at least a 650 credit score, and they're going to be in a position where they have a legitimate need of capital for their business. And either the business, uh, like if it's a startup, they've got a very clear path of, of getting to being cash flow positive, or the business as it already is has, has enough cash flow to cover the loan. The, the main requirement that every lender is going to be looking for is they want to make sure that the cash flow of your business is sufficient to cover the service of the debt, just like any rental property, right? If you're going to go get a mortgage on a rental property and, you know, your, let's say your, your expected lease monthly net on it is $1,800, you know, you're going to want to make sure your mortgage is below $1,800 with a comfortable margin. So, you know, probably $1,400, $1,500 is kind of what you would want to see. Um, the general rule of thumb with SP is they want to see at least 1.25 to 1.5 times. So if your, if your bank, if your bank payment monthly is $10,000 a month, the bank is going to want to see generally at least probably 12 and a half to $15,000 a month in profit on average over the last, you know, 12 to 24 months. So that, that's how I would describe it. You know, they have decent credit, they have a legitimate need of capital in the business. And, um, you know, obviously there has to be cash flow that's sufficient to cover the amount that they want to borrow. So we're listening to or uh, watching Joshua Kim. His company is sevenaccelerator.com. He helps uh, entrepreneurs and business owners with the SBA loan process. So Joshua, I always ask on this program is like, what's one question that no one ever asked that you wish they would ask? Hmm, about SBA loans, that's a good one. Or about you. Oh, about me. Um, what is a question that that's a good one that I wish they would ask? Um, I, I think as it relates to doing SBA financing, I think one question that I wish people would ask, um, you know, more of themselves, like, you know, I guess, what is their, you know, hmm, that's, that's what you go. Like, I, I guess one of the biggest ones would be like, you know, what are the biggest misconceptions about SBA financing? Like if you had to, if you had, if you only had 120 seconds to educate a business owner about SBA loans, what would you say? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what I would tell them is, you know, like I said, kind of earlier, not all banks are created equal. Getting SBA financing doesn't require a ton of cash or collateral. SBA financing, you know, it doesn't require your uh, perfect credit. It doesn't require, you know, all these things. I, I think just something I think people, you know, should ask more of themselves is, you know, if you really need capital for your business, why aren't you looking more, you know? And, and I think that's that's what pe people go online. They fill out a couple of forms. They get a phone call. They get a decline here, and they're like, "Oh, well, I guess I just can't get it." It's like if you, you know, if you're trying to grow your business, you're gonna have to put more effort into it than that. I, I think a lot of people just haphazardly do that. So, well, good. So what what I want to do here now is uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up, but we're going to we're gonna exclusive have some exclusive content on our youtube channel and we're going to yeah. discuss can i buy a business with an sba loan and go deeper into the myths around that 
that exist around SBA uh, mystery financing. So Joshua, you've been an excellent guest on the ROI online podcast. How can folks reach out to you should they want you to help them shine a light on this mystery process? Yeah, so I can help definitely shed some light on the uh, on the process and you know save people a lot of time. That's kind of the whole premise of why I started this business. I saw that there was a need for you know not only educating business owners about what exists, but obviously making sure that they have someone to guide them through what what is otherwise a very confusing and frustrating process. Um, I think we'll we'll probably put a link to to the website in the uh, in the description, but they can always just reach me at my direct emails, Josh at seven accelerator.com. Um, you know, my, my email is always open. So feel free to reach out. Just tell me, you know, you heard hear about me from the ROI podcast. Uh, I may, you know, be more than willing to get an idea of, of, of what kind of business you have and you know, see see if there's a way that I can help you raise capital. I mean, obviously I can't. You know, not every business owner that approaches me, it's a, it's a suitable SBA need. Some it's too big, some it's too small. Um, but, you know, what I tell people is like, look, if you need anywhere between 50 grand and 5 million, SBA is a great option. So uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll put a link in the description if they want to go click on, on the yeah. website, read more content. But yeah, if, if they want to directly reach out by email, it's just josh at 7accelerator.com. All right, Joshua, you've, uh, Joshua Kim, you've been an excellent guest on the ROI online podcast. Yeah, thanks. That's a wrap.